Hello. Hello and good morning. How are we? All good? We are good. Good morning uh -huh. and welcome all to Narrabri Shire Council's ATO webinar series. This morning we are joined by the wonderful Lyndon Regina from the Australian Tax Office. And my name is Julie Goddard, Small Business Liaison Officer for Narrabri Shire Council. And this morning we have running a home-based business webinar. Thank you for joining us, Lyndon. Look, absolutely my pleasure. My, it's fantastic to be here. Wonderful. We are excited to have you on board as part of New South Wales Small Business Month. Narrabri Shire Council has teamed up with Chambers of Commerce and business groups across the Shire this year to bring Narrabri Shire businesses a range of activities. Um, we have on board this year Bogabri Business Chamber, We Ward and District Chamber of Commerce, Narrabri and District Chamber of Commerce, and the Narrabri Industrial Network to present a series of events and activities. New South Wales Small Business Month is held in October and designed to support small businesses with a range of activities by government partners. So thank you so much for joining us, Lyndon. Yeah, look, I'll tell you something. It's, um, it's awesome to be able to come back into the Narrabri and Shire. And let me tell you, one of my business colleagues here in Sydney, I was telling him about the Narrabri Summit, you know, and, and the great lineup of, of people that are going to be on there. Anyway, he jumped on straight away and registered because um, he's been up to Narrabri Shire a number of times on drought relief tours. Um, so a number of you will recognise him. He's a real character. So uh, make sure you sign up for it because uh, uh, you'll get a bit of personality coming out of the tax office. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's part of our virtual summit, which will be held on Thursday, the 29th of October. And we're very excited to have Lyndon back on board with that event as well. So this morning we have running a home-based business. Yeah, and look, um, something that we've been seeing a lot, Jilly, uh, over the last 27 weeks, and you know why I say 27 weeks? Because I've been counting every single day of COVID. Mm. Ugh. But anyway, so what we've seen, because I've been uh, afforded the opportunity to be able to phone a lot of small businesses around Australia across all different industry types, and we've seen a lot of new startups popping up um, because people have lost their jobs and, you know, and they've kind of, you know, gotten, they've taken a step off the treadmill and they've had a bit of a rethink with life in relation to, you know, a lot of people got hobbies they've turned around and thought, well, you know what, maybe I can make a bit of money out of my hobby. Um, so we've seen a lot of new startups and we've seen a lot of shop fronts shut, obviously, because of COVID um, and, you know, obviously more in, in those metropolitan areas. Um, but people have decided to head home to work. You know, they've gone and gutted the, the spare room you know, thrown out all the kids' toys um, and they've made their, you know, spare rooms into home-based businesses, uh, business offices. So um, obviously cutting down on your overheads. Um, but the one thing that's been coming out is people are saying, well, look, if I've done this and I've headed home, how can I claim my tax deductions? And this is a fantastic little package to be able to get you across the line of not jipping yourself with your tax deductions, you know, making sure that you're claiming exactly exactly what you need to claim and what you're entitled to claim. Why let money fly by when it can be in your top pocket? Absolutely. And we're excited to go through this with you today. So let's jump on in. I'll leave it to you and we'll get into our presentation. Thanks, Jilly. Really, really appreciate that. So look, firstly, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land waters and the community. Look, I'd like to pay my respects to them, their elders, culture, uh, their elders um, and their cultures past and present. So look, today's webinar, we um, strongly encourage questions through the chat box. But look, if you um, want to come through and unmute yourself, you're more than welcome to do it verbally. I'll stop at the end of every subject and we'll for questions. Um, and um, this package is going to cover the three categories of a home-based business. We're going to talk about occupancy and running expenses and what you can claim and how you can claim that. And what are the rules and regulations around claiming what you want to claim? I'm going to go into a bit of detail around capital gains tax because I find um, when I'm out in the community, you know, 
pre-COVID and oh, fingers crossed post-COVID, I need to get out, um, that a lot of people ask uh, quite a few questions around capital gains tax. So I plan to really break that down and simplify that for you today. Um, we're going to talk about how much you can claim. Um, motor vehicle deductions and we're just going to touch on the depreciation of assets, just plant the seed because at the end of the day the ATO's got an absolute smorgasbord of uh, calculators and tools and you know what, you pay your taxes, let us do the work for you. So we're going to give you calculators to be able to lessen the burden of meeting your taxation and your superannuation obligations. So look, let's get into it. Um, there are three types of, or three categories of a home-based business. Um, so let's talk through each one now. So category one, this is a situation um, where you work at home, but you don't have a, sp a specific work area. Um, so there's no area that's set aside primarily uh, for business activities. So here we can see the owners just working at the kitchen table with, you know, all the kids running around them, which, you know, as we know, is just heaps of fun, isn't it, people? Um, let's go into category two. So category two is where you're working at home um, without a specific work area. Um, but in this situation, um, the, you've actually got an office, okay? So you may not have a shed out the back or, or a separate room. You've actually got it in your house um, and it's an area that is primarily and exclusively used for business activities. Um, category three. This is where the home is a place of business. And I can only imagine quite a few businesses within the Narrabri Shire would probably fall into this category. Um, so we'll talk through each one of these categories and exactly what it means for you. All right, so the golden rules really office is that you must be able to, and you, I'm gonna sound like a broken record by the end of this webinar, but you're gonna hear me say two words, proportioning or proportion, and substantiate. Um, they're the two words used by the tax office. What does that mean? It just means you need to divide private life and business life. Uh, substantiation is you need to be able to prove that you've spent the money for your business, okay? All right, so look, let's chat running expenses and occupancy expenses. What do they mean? So running expenses are the increased costs of using your home's facilities uh, due to business activities. For example, electricity, gas, or a landline phone. And I always giggle when I think of landline phone because I'm not sure how many people still have one. I know probably quite a few in the country do, and that makes that absolutely reasonable sense. Um, I, I guess me growing up in the country, I probably still still very much countryfied. Um, I still have a landline phone, but only the parents have the number. So um, we always know if we're in trouble if, if the landline phone rings. You can see expenses. So these are the expenses related to the area of your home that you use for business. For example, rent or mortgage interest or council rates. So let's look at how the categories of a home-based business actually affect the deductions that you can claim for expenses for sole traders and partnerships. We're going to touch on companies and trusts in just a moment. So look, if your home is not a place of business, then one of the first two columns you can generally claim deductions for additional expenses that you incur. For example, the extra cost of business telephone calls <laughs> to the good old landline, um, additional utilities costs, so um, heating, gas, electricity, and the decline in value of business furniture and equipment. Now, note that if you don't office, you cannot claim for the decline in curtains or carpets as these are uh, considered as, as private um, expenses. Now look, um, I've got to emphasize, the claims are for additional costs incurred because you're conducting your business activities from your home. Now look, you can only claim occupancy expenses if your home is the principal place of business. In addition to running costs, um, you can generally claim a proportion of the mortgage interest, uh, rent, council rates, and insurance premiums. And we're gonna look around the rules of claiming occupancy shortly. So look, the ATO's got a home office calculator. 
So if you were to go to ato.gov.au, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll get to a sort of a black section. I believe it's in the second column, about halfway down, you're going to see the words calculators and tools. So if you head in there, as I was saying, you know, there's a, there's a buffet of calculators and tools there that you'll be able to use. Um, and you know what? It's going to cut down on your time. We better than that is there gives you more time back into your business so don't be afraid to head to that calculator and um, tool section on ATO website save it as your favorite because it really is something that you can use um, to shorten the time that you spend doing the books and give you more time back to your business all right so look let's look at this example meet Sam he's a plumber so look, Sam traditionally does a lot of his work out of the city doing commercial plumbing. Um, however, when he's not working out of the city um, or out of the town, whatever it is, um, he is actually doing his bookkeeping from home. So he doesn't have a room uh, um, dedicated as an office. So he's actually doing it out of the good old kitchen. So what can he claim? claim for his telephone use, gas and electricity. Um, he can also claim for the decline in value of his desk and his computer. As he doesn't have a place of business in his home, he can't claim decline in value of things like, you know, those curtains, carpets and blinds. And he can't claim occupancy expenses either. So let's work through another example. So Megan, she's a sole trader. She has a home-based business and she's trying to figure out whether she can claim occupancy expenses. So to be able to claim um, deductions for occupancy expenses, she has to pass the interest deductibility test. Okay, so you can actually go to ATO website and type in interest deductibility test and it's going to pop up there for you. So to pass the test, the area of her home needs to have a character of business. I'll explain that more. So, you know, the character of a place of business um, are things like, you know, you may have a sign at the front, front identifying businesses um, working out of your home. Um, it's not readily suitable or adaptable for private or domestic purposes. And the area is used exclusively or almost exclusively for carrying on a business. So what we have seen throughout COVID, um, we've seen a number of different businesses popping up. Now, um, for those who have just logged in recently, um, I was just saying, you know, I was afforded the opportunity to speak to a lot of small business owners um, over the last 26 weeks of COVID, coming up 27 weeks. Um, and we've seen a lot of shop fronts close and those businesses have headed home. And we've also seen a lot of startups because people have um, had a you know, reduced income into their homes, and look, it may not have affected Narrabai um, to the extent it's affected metropolitan areas in particular. You know, we're looking at our dear friends in Victoria. Um, however, we have seen those people think outside the box. They've taken COVID as a bit of time to step off the treadmill um, and have a bit of a rethink redo their business plans, um, have a, a bit of a yarn to their um, tax accountants um, and also have a bit of a chat to their family and friends in relation to can they turn their hobby into a small business. So we've seen a lot of um, so home-based business-wise, the stats are really, really booming uh, in the hairdressers um, space. Um, caterers home kitchens. This has been a huge one, especially in the metro areas. You know, we all sort of got sent home to, you know, work from home and um, and we all got told that, you know, you only had to go out, um, you know, uh, to go and do the grocery shopping pretty much. That's been my life. Um, but we've seen with these um, caterers that are working from their home kitchens, they've engaged delivery drivers. Um, and yeah, I mean, you probably would have seen it as splashed all over the media. Um, I, I can't wait to see what the actual stats are that come out, the official stats, because we'll probably find caterers' home kitchens are definitely up the top um, new startups and the new home-based businesses. We've also seen people like photographers um, pull out of their shop fronts and head home and set up their own home studios. Um, we've seen a lot of tutors, financial advisors, bookkeepers and childminders um, starting their home-based businesses. 
um, or, you know, moved from the shop front into their homes to be able to run their businesses. One of the bigger things that we've seen, and look, it has slightly touched the media over the last couple of weeks, especially in New South Wales, uh, in relation to tourism. Um, so we're all encouraged to, you know, get out and explore our own state. Um, and I've actually got a few friends that have just been to Narrabri um, over the last few weekends. And they said, Lyndon, the food is amazing. The people are even better. Um, and I think the beer was right up there as well. So look, um, we've seen... Um, a lot of sort of tourist type industries and let's highlight bed and breakfasts. The likes of Airbnbs have sort of come out with their stats saying um, bed and breakfasts are certainly on the up because it's affordable um, accommodation. So with these bed and breakfast owners, um, I think if they were established before COVID, I mean, obviously they had to shut down during COVID, but I think what they did, as I was saying to you before, they just stepped off that treadmill and they've just sat back, had a bit of a think tank and thought, you know what, how can I better my business? How can I work smarter and not harder? Um, so bed and breakfast operators are certainly up there as well with A, um, startups and B, um, improvements. Quite a few bed and breakfast owners have, you know, gone out and done quite a few renos to be able to improve um, the service that they can deliver to their clients. So they're the main ones that we've seen. There's obviously there's going to be a lot more coming out in the future. Um, but look, let's go back to Megan's example. So look, if she passes the interest deductibility test, she can actually claim for occupancy expenses. So in this case, she may have to pay tax on capital gain when she sells a home, uh, regardless whether she borrowed money to buy her home or whether she decided not to claim a deduction for occupancy expenses when she was actually entitled to it. So this is where I'm just going to stop and go into a little bit about around capital gains tax, because normally I do get a lot of questions around this. So I'm going to put a couple of scenarios to you. So capital gains tax, you know, you may be subjected to a, or call it a CGT, um, um, you know, experience uh, when you go and lodge your tax return. So if you go and claim your occupancy expenses from the home that you own. Um, so your mortgage interest, your council rates, um, you know, insurance premiums, that sort of thing. You need to think about this. How long are you going to be in your home? And the reason why I say this is because are you better to um, claim uh, your occupancy expenses deductions in your top pocket annually um, and then be subjected to a capital gains tax event down the track when you sell your home? Or are you better off not claiming your occupancy expenses because you're only going to be in your home for a short amount of time? Um, you know, thinking about selling up, heading to the beach. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. Um, so you may not want to claim those occupancy expenses because you don't want to be subjected to a capital gains tax event down the track. But let me put this to you. Real estate prices haven't dramatically dropped. So look, you know, look at it this way. Population is going to keep growing. Real estate prices are going to keep increasing because we need to keep up with demand. I mean, really, at the end of the day, that's what it is, black and white. So uh, are you better claiming your occupancy expenses um, on, on an annual basis and then be subjected to that capital gains tax event down the track because you may just, you know, receive a bit more money for your real estate once you sell it? I don't know, I'll put that out to you. I've got to remain apolitical. I can't tell you what to do. I can't give you the, specific, uh, the specifics. I can certainly give you general advice, but what we've seen, um, they're the two scenarios in relation to what people are thinking about around capital gains tax. So look, I hope I've been able to plant a bit of a seed with you today in relation to the capital gains tax. If you've got any more questions around that, look, don't hesitate to firstly, head to Narrabri Shire Council, ask them, you know, who can you send me to? Who can you suggest where I can get some financial advice, you know, low cost, no cost financial advice? Um, or alternatively, um, if it's a tax related question, you can actually email me, okay? I'll be more than happy to ask said can't do specifics but I certainly can point you in the right direction in a general fashion. 
All right, so look, let's um, let's keep driving on in. And as I said, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to come through that chat box because I always keep one eye on the chat box and one eye on the presentation. So look, I just want to just briefly just go back to Megan's circumstances in relation to personal services income. If you haven't heard of personal services income, head to ATO website and type in the words personal services income um, and you'll see there's, you know, we've got a, quite a bit of information surrounding that on the website. So if personal services income rules were to apply to Megan's home-based business, she cannot claim occupancy expenses regardless of whether she passes the interest deductibility test or not. You'll need to use the personal services income tool on the ATO website to see if the personal services um, income rules apply to her home-based business before she can actually claim her occupancy expenses. Excuse me, a bit of a frog in my throat this morning. No, I don't have COVID, I'm all good. Um, all right, so let's look at company and trusts. So we talked about the occupancy and running expenses that sole traders and partners can claim for their tax deductions. Now, if you're a business um, and you know your business is structured in a company or a trust sense, it's a little bit different. So let's have a bit of a look at John. So John um, has a company. His company's called John's Repairs. He runs the business from a workshop at home of which he owns. In this case, the company John's Repairs should actually have a formal market agreement in place with John, the owner of the property, to be able to use part of his home. The agreement's going to determine which expenses the business pays for and actually what he can claim as a deduction. So if John doesn't have a formal market value agreement in place with his company, there are a number of implications for both him and his company centred around whether they're actually receiving benefits from not having that formal agreement in place. So if the income John's repairs receives is personal services income, the personal services income rules will apply and the income will be treated as this Come for tax purposes. So this will actually affect the deductions that he can claim. Um, so look, once you know what you're entitled to claim in respect to your home-based business expenses, you need to then work out how much you can claim for the business use of your home facilities. So you can't claim a deduction for the private use of your home facilities. And there are a number of ways you can do this, look, depending on your situation. So look, if you're entitled to claim occupancy expenses, you can claim a percentage of the expenses based on the floor space and the amount of time during the year that you've actually used that space for business purposes. So look, let's go back to Megan's example. She's a sole trader. She's operating a hair salon business at her home. Her salon is actually attached to a house that she uses almost exclusively for business. She passes the interest deductibility test and personal services income rules don't apply to her situation. So it means Megan can actually claim for occupancy expenses. So look, her salon covers 10% of the floor area of her home. She runs the business five days a week. She uses the salon space for private use when she's not running a business. And her home insurance premium for the year is $800. Now, let me just stop there because I want to go into this floor space thing. The tax office often uses um, the figure 10%. It doesn't mean that that's all you can claim, okay? Um, you can claim, you know, your office might cover 40% of your, your floor space. But be really careful here. I'm a big person of, of you know, logic. Um, if it appears logical and it seems fair, the chances are you're probably right. And what I mean by that is that I, um, I sat in an auditing seat for a number of years with the tax office and I saw a lot of tax returns that were claiming 90% um, office floor, floor space from their home. So I then go and have a look at the tax return and I can see that this person's got a spouse and they've got three children. So my first obvious question to them is, wow, so you've got... Um, five people living in 10% of the home. It must be very squishy. 
So, you know, it's kind of logical really, isn't it? I won't go into any more detail, but you get my drift. You've got to um, measure out the, the floor space of your home and literally call me old fashioned, call me ex farmer, but I use a tape measure and that's how we do our small business from home. So look, let's go back into the calculations. Let's actually see how the calculations work out for Megan's insurance premium of $800. So the formula to calculate her claimable amount is actually the cost, which is the amount of the premium in this example I've just brought up on your screen. So you multiply the percentage of the floor area of the business, then you multiply the percentage that you actually work in the year. So let's look at Megan. So because she uses the place for private use when she's not working, she needs to work out the percentage of the days that she actually uses her place for business. So she works five days a week. If she multiplies five by 52, she's going to get days, which is roughly 70% of the year. So if Megan took holidays or perhaps was a bit sick, you know, over a couple of days of the year, she wouldn't include those days. So, um, the premium is $800, you multiply that by 10% of the floor area, and then you multiply that 70% of the working days, which actually equates out to $56. So Megan can only claim $56 out of the $800 for her occupancy expenses. So remember when I was talking about capital gains tax? So this is another thing to consider. Um, you've paid that $800 and this is only on one of the occupancy expenses, you know, obviously you're going to have more than that. But, you know, if you're going to pay out $800 and you're only getting $56 back and yes, you know, my farming father used to always say every dollar counts and it does, honestly, it does. And the dollars add up over the years. But look at it this way, um, for the amount that you're paying out for the amount that you're getting back. This is where you've got to ask yourself, is it worth putting that money into your top pocket um, annually um, and being subjected to that capital gains tax event down the track when you sell your home or not claiming your occupancy expenses and then you wouldn't be subjected to capital gains tax on that type of event for occupancy expenses. So you kind of get my drift. I mean, I'll leave that up to you to have that host that conversation with your tax preparer. decision as to which way you're going to go with that one. So let's have a bit of a chat around um, how you're actually going to calculate the amounts um, to claim for your running expenses. So look, there are three methods you can choose from running expenses of your home-based business. It's going to be pattern of use, floor area, or hourly rate. So firstly, to work out the pattern of use, you need to keep a diary for a representative four week period. That's actually gonna show how you use your work area. Then you apply this as a pattern of use for the whole year. And don't forget, it excludes those periods where you go on holidays, you're sick, um, and obviously only for business use. You don't include your private use as well. The floor area method. Look, this is the most commonly and most appropriate way to be able to work out your costs um, or your running costs. So you can separate your expenses based on the proportion of the floor area of your home that you're actually using for business or the proportion of the year that you used it for business. This method may be appropriate for expenses relating to electricity, gas and cleaning. Now, thirdly, Instead of recording actual expenses for heating, cooling, lighting, furniture, <gasps> furniture depreciation, um, you know, like the list goes on, you can actually claim a set rate of cents per hour based on either an actual hourly rate or an established pattern of hourly use. So currently, the rate's 52 cents in the hour. So the rate's been worked out based on average energy costs and the value of common furniture items used in the home-based businesses. Now this rate's reviewed regularly, so make sure, keep an eye on that ATO website because the rate's constantly being updated. You wanna make sure that you claim the right rate for the right year. Now, I need to highlight this because a lot of people still didn't realise this. So tax returns are due. If you're, not, if you're not going through an accountant, your tax return is gonna be due in a couple of weeks time, 31st of August. Bear this in mind if you've been working from home. From the 1st of March 2020 through to the 30th of June 2020, you can actually claim 80 cents per hour. It's called the shortcut method. Um, so 
This is actually going to cover more expenses such as the decline in your computer under the increased rate. So let me be very clear from that. So the 1st of July 2019 through to the 29th of February, because this year, good old 2020 was a leap year, um, you can claim from the 1st of July 19 through to the 29th of February 2020 at 52 cents in the hour. Okay, from the 1st of March 2020 through to the 30th of June 2020, you can use the shortcut method and actually claim 80 cents per hour. All right, so look, um, if you can't use any of these methods, just use a method that's reasonable, it's logical. Um, you obviously, you exclude your private living costs and you've obviously got records to be able to show how you've calculated your business expenses. Now, your business use of the home business must be substantial and not incidental. For example, you can't claim for the electricity for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just because your fax machine's on. Now, don't, uh, <laughs> don't giggle too much, but I've seen this a lot. I've seen a lot of tax returns come through the system that have been claiming 24 hours a day, seven days a week worth of electricity. So again, I head to the tax return, you've got the spouse, you've got the three kids, and yes, I know you probably, you already know what I'm going to say. My first question to those people that are under audit uh, uh, is basically, do you not sleep? Do you not eat? Do you not spend time with your children? So you must work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. You must, be you must be either being dairy farming and you must be very, very tired. <laughs> and that's all I can say. But it's logical, it's fair, and it's reasonable, okay? All right, so look, up till now, we've spoken about home-based business categories. Um, we've touched on occupancy and running expenses. We've talked around calculating the claimable amounts. And we've also touched on the methods to calculate the amounts. So, um, so we've given you a nice clear view. So look, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna head back to good old Jilly, our gorgeous Jilly at Narrabri Shire. She's gonna get us across what's happening in the Shire space. Then we're gonna touch on motor vehicle um, deductions. And let me tell you, I'm gonna be talking about the ATO app. So if you haven't heard about the ATO app, get ready, it's exciting, but for the minute, Jilly, back to you. Thank you, Lyndon, and what a wonderful first half of our webinar this morning. So much wonderful information. I think we'll all be able to take back and have a good think about how we're running our home-based businesses. Um, we have so many activities on offer for New South Wales Small Business Month, and we are very, very fortunate to have Lyndon on board for another two webinars in the next couple of Thursdays, but we'll get to that in a moment. We'll run through what is happening at the end of the month. We have a small business summit being held on Thursday, the 29th of October from 10 till around 2 p.m. And we have some fantastic presenters on board for this summit and lots of government agencies speaking about programs that might be happening, inspirational speakers and a panel of wonderful local businesses. So that event is definitely not to be missed. Um, and definitely a great opportunity to find out about some procurement opportunities that are available in the Narrabri area. And we have lots of big and exciting projects just on our doorstep. So be sure to tune in and sign up for that one. Another great event we have happening this month is on Friday the 30th, after our summit, is a workshop day at the Crossing Theatre. So we've got together some of the council's key teams to provide a few, four different workshops throughout the day. Around, one around social media, one around inclusive business, one around grants and how to gain grant success. And our final workshop, which is very exciting, is increasing your chances of tendering success. And we'll be also talking about contracting and working and providing to council. Um, we also have a couple of special guests attending that one, so that's very exciting. Our other events this month are our ATO webinar series. So we've kindly got Lyndon back on board next Thursday again for cash flow for small business. Very, very important. Cash flow is king. And following that on Thursday, the 29th of October, we have digital options for your small business. So that's where we'll be discussing what applications are around to make running business easier, which is very, very important. Um, also this week, Friday, I'll be in WeWar at the Marinda Cafe 
to shout businesses a coffee and we can have a chat about all the services that are available for small businesses throughout different government agencies and through council. Also in Narrabra on the 20, 20th of October um, at 123 Cafe and Bogabri on Wednesday the 21st. So be sure to come down and have a coffee. I'm very excited to see everybody. And we also have some fantastic workshops being run by House and Paddock Consulting. Uh, we have a great Maximising Your Time and Productivity workshop on Tuesday the 27th and a You and Your Team workshop on Wednesday the 28th. And if you haven't heard of House and Paddock, Beck Fing is based in uh, Gundawindi and has done lots with many different agencies uh, across the region for a long time and these are workshops you definitely don't want to miss out on. So I'll throw it back to Lyndon now and we'll get into our motor vehicle expenses section of the webinar. Thanks Judy, I appreciate that. Actually I really like the name of House Paddock Consulting. Um, yeah. I think that's really unique because you know if you have grown up in the country you do always remember I remember ours, um, we had a tennis court, or, you know, when, when we had the yep. farm, we had a tennis court and um, apparently the new owners, when they brought the property back in 2013, um, they came back to us in 2016 and said they'd cleaned out the house paddock and they'd found over a thousand tennis balls. So, wow. um, yeah, yeah. So you can imagine there was probably more tennis balls hit outside um, of the court rather than in the court. Um, so, yeah, that actually, it's a very warming uh, business name. So, yeah, it brings back a lot of great memories. Hey, Jilly, thanks for that. And I'll tell you something, Narrabri Shire is going off. You've got heaps going on. So um, I wouldn't mind uh, heading out to uh, Wewa in relation to you shouting me a coffee. I'm good to go. Yeah, come out for a coffee. We Absolutely, it's, it's a, it'll oh. be an exp, it'll be an expensive coffee by the time I get there. But you know what? You got <laughs> you guys are worth it. All right. So look, let's keep driving. Thanks, Julie, for that. Let's talk motor vehicle deductions. So um, motor vehicle deductions can be claimed when you know you're going to go and visit a client's premise. Um, perhaps you might be delivering some documents, something along those lines. Purchasing equipment and supplies. Um, maybe doing your banking, going to the post office, or maybe it's a place where your clients can actually visit you um, or maybe you need to go and see your accountant. So the, the can claim for your business use of a motor vehicle. Look, it depends on your business structure, uh, the type of vehicle that you use and whether you also use the vehicle for private purposes. So if you're a company or a trust, you can claim actual costs based on the receipts of all your expenses that you're claiming. You can also private usage accounted for by the company, but this can be a little bit more complicated than what we're going to go into here. So look, I know this isn't cut, this isn't on the Narrabri Shires um, menu list or smorgasbord of all the activities that you're doing. But look, the ATO hosts uh, four to five free webinars per day. Um, so if you want to find out a bit more about car fringe benefit taxes, um, especially if you're a company, you might want to head to um, the link that I've just sent you in the chat box and for recording purposes, go to ato.gov.au, type the word small business webinars in the search function um, and you'll be able to register for a free session, approximately about an hour. Sometimes it can fall under that hour mark um, depending on questioning time, but it's certainly um, employer car fringe benefit tax packages uh, will get you across the line in, in your understanding around what you can claim and what you can. Okay, so um, if you're a sole trader or a partnership, you've got to think about is your vehicle over one ton or, or if it's, or maybe it's under one ton. So if your business uses vehicles carrying capacity is one ton or more, you can actually claim the actual costs. And I know now, bro, you've probably the majority of you have you got uh, utes. So, you know, they would fall over the one tonne capacity. Um, if your vehicle's carrying capacity is less than one tonne, you can get deductions for the proportion of your business um, use for your vehicle that you own, lease or hire um, under a purchase hire agreement. All right, so um, let's have a bit of a chat around claiming how many kilometres you can claim. 
So, you know, in the metro areas, traditionally they're doing under 5,000 Ks, but, you know, being in the country areas and as I grew up in Whoop Whoop, you know, round trip to, to town was just over 100 clicks. So, you know, we were obviously doing way over our um, 5,000 K limit. But um, so if you want to claim more than 5,000 kilometres in motor vehicle deductions for one uh, vehicle, you're going to need a logbook. So this is what we actually call the logbook method. So with this method, you need to keep um, a record of your travels for 12 weeks. The logbook needs to be representative across the year. So don't just choose the 12 most busiest weeks of the year, you know, around harvest or shearing or, you know, um, uh, what you're doing from an agricultural perspective or what you're doing from a retail perspective. perspective. Um, just make sure it's representative and an average over the year. Now, you can rely on your logbook for five years, even if you upgrade your vehicle. All you need to do is, um, is record the odometer reading in that vehicle um, at the start of the financial year and at the end of the financial year. Or when you upgrade your vehicle, just do the start and, and the, the odometer reading from the start of the financial year. And then when you upgrade your vehicle, note what the odometer reading is there. And then with the new vehicle, um, or, you know, second-hand vehicle, whatever it is, um, just note the, the start of the odometer and then at the end of the financial year, put what the, that odometer reading is reading there and then. Um, now, if you don't want to claim more than 5,000 kilometres for motor vehicle deductions for one vehicle, then you have a choice of using the logbook or you can actually use the sense by kilometre method. So if you use that sense, um, kilometer method, you can, your claim is actually going to be based on a set rate of business kilometers that you traveled. The rates reviewed, it's updated regularly, so just make sure you're claiming for the right year. Now, the ATO may ask you how you've worked out your claim, so just make sure that you keep a detailed record of the calculation. Um, if you use this method, you cannot make a separate claim for depreciation of the value of your car. So when choosing a claim method, if you satisfy the method's requirements, you, you can actually choose the method that's going to give you the best result. Okay, so as I was saying, you don't want to undercut yourself with your deductions and so many people do it. And that's where I'm just going to stop here and, and let's talk record keeping. Um, so 60% of small businesses fail in the first three years, usually comes First thing is um, poor record keeping, okay? Um, a lot of people can't see the income coming into their business and the expenses going out of their business. So um, if you don't have a clear visual of what's happening in your business, it makes it really, really hard to be able to record at the end of the year. Um, the second thing is debt. So we all have good intentions to put our tax away. But you know what? Things get in between. And sometimes we have to eat into uh, that money that we've put away. It's not advisable because at the end of the financial year, when you go and lodge your tax return, you end up with a tax debt. And you know what? It's, it's hard to move forward into the next year of business with you know, a tax debt hanging over your head. Um, so, you know, we always recommend that uh, record keeping, as Jilly was actually saying before, you know, cash flow is king. I only heard that saying on the radio uh, this morning. Um, but... Record keeping is king as well. It really, really is. Um, if you want to better your business, if you want to be able to look back at how, where you earned your money and where you didn't earn your money, it gives you a bit of an idea of how you can earn more money, things better. How can you work smarter? So look, um, I'm just going to pop into the chat box as well, a link for record keeping. Um, and for recording purposes, um, go to ato.gov.au, type in record keeping into the search function and uh, there's lots of different ways of how you can keep your records. Naturally, in 2020, you know, the ATO would turn around and say, and, and not only us, your tax professionals are going to be supporting this as well. Electronic is, um, is best. And the reason why we say that is because it cuts down on your time. But... In saying that, if you're on the manual system and you're happy with that, stay on it. If that's what you like doing and that's where you're comfortable and comfortability, small business is all about being comfortable. It's all about doing it the way you want to do it because this is your business. So um, if you choose to do the manual system, no dramas. You know, as my old man used to say, if something's not broken, why fix it? <laughs>
So, uh, but if you are thinking about, you know what, I'd like to cut down my timing in my, in my bookkeeping space, um, have a look at record keeping on ato.gov.au because there are free, um, a heap of free options. Now, talking about free options, I love free stuff. Heard of it. Okay, so it's an app that you can download through your, um, your Android store or through your iPhone store, through your Apple store. Um, I'm just going to pop another link into the chat box now in relation to the ATO app. So in particular, if you don't have accounting software, uh, the ATO app's a fantastic little app. It's free that you can use to be able to record your income, your expenses, your business related kilometers, and you can take photos of your receipts. I'm a massive advocate of tax on the go. Do you know why? Because I hate sitting down at the end of the financial year, tearing my hair out, trying to find receipts. Um, and, you know, half of those receipts are probably faded as well because, you know, everyone likes to use that thermal paper. Um, so, you know, again, if I don't have proof of my receipts, I can't claim it. So I'm, under I'm undercutting myself for my deductions. Now, um, the ATO app is, look, it's so easy to use. There's quite a few different functionalities in there. At the front of the app, when you first open it up, you're going to see a lot of different tools scrolling across the screen. I'm going to touch on two of those tools now. One of them's key dates. Um, so if you want to get a set a reminder in your app of when your BAS is due or when your tax return's due, maybe your fringe benefit tax return might be your taxable payment annual report. I could go on forever, but I'll stop there. So if you want to get a reminder for when these things are due, um, you can set that within the ATO app. The second thing that's really important, and I've got an example behind this, um, it's called the ABR lookup. So what we've been seeing um, a lot um, that's been trending over you know, the last sort of 10 years um, is people pocketing their GST. And the way that they're doing that is that they're charging GST, but they're not registered for GST. Let me give you an example. So I had a concrete block laid in my backyard last September, um, and the gentleman gave me a quote before he obviously did the job. The quote didn't have an ABN number on it, but it was charging me GST. So obviously I've changed the name for privacy purposes, but I just said to, Joe, to the bloke, Joe, I said, hey, Joe, what's your ABN number? And he, you know, he gave it to me. And so I typed it into the ABR lookup within the ATO app. And I could clearly see that our dear Joe wasn't registered for GST. So I said to Joe, hey, Joe, have a bit of a gander at that. You're not registered for GST. Why are you charging me GST? And of course, he turned around and said, oh, what, do you work for the ATO or something? So um, this happens a lot. All right. So just be really, really careful that you're not, is that you shouldn't have to be paying out. Naturally, if, you know, the contractor is registered for GST, absolutely, you'd need to pay GST. Um, but that, what's happening out there, and this is all part of what we call the black economy. If you were to Google that, you'll see the, the you know, the hundreds of millions of dollars going missing just within Australia um, of GST not getting, getting charged to the customer. The customer's paying it, but it's not actually being forwarded onto the tax office. Um, and also you'll see paid correctly, superannuation that's either not being paid or being underpaid. Um, so you would have heard about, you know, those famous chefs over the last couple of years that have uh, underpaid their staff. And not just chefs, there's quite a few entities out there that have, you know, dramatically underpaid their staff. So this is how we're actually cutting down on the, on the black economy whole. Um, so the ATO app, let's get back to that just quickly and then we'll get on with motor vehicles. Uh, well, actually, we're going to head into depreciation. But just to finish off this section, so another little example, you know, I've got a, I've got a wood chopping business. Um, I seized my chainsaw because stupid me didn't keep it, the oil up to it. Things so to get another chainsaw. Um, I got the whiz bang, got it to the counter, paid it. Um, the attendee gave me the thermal receipt. Now, I know you guys get some really hot days down there. I get that. But at least it's dry heat. It's not humid heat. I've really struggled with this humidity in Sydney. Um, but in, when was it? 4th of January this year. Um, you probably guess where I'm broadcasting from now. Not too far from you guys. But we had a 48 degree day. Um, so if I was to walk out of Bunnings with that thermal receipt, poof, all that information would be gone and I wouldn't be able to claim uh, my tax deduction. So what I do, it's all about, uh, ATO app's all about healthy record keeping, being in a good routine. So when, as soon as I get that receipt, I do it religiously. I take a photo of the receipt. 
I put in um, how much it cost me, automatically works out the GST, I place a description in there and I put it under all other expenses. Boom, it's done. Data goes up to the cloud. Same thing can happen with income. So you put your income in up to the cloud. Same as receipts and same as your business related kilometres. You can turn on the GPS or you can do point to point. So all that data heads up to the cloud, come tax time. If you're an individual or a, a sole trader, um, you can actually bring the data down from the cloud in two ways. Um, so firstly, you can bring it down in an Excel spreadsheet format, which you can send to your tax professional or lodge your own tax return. Or alternatively, the app will ask you, would you like me to pre-fill my tax, which sits inside my gov? Um, so that means that all the data is going to come down from the cloud and it's going to automatically pre-fill my tax return. So that actually means I don't have to do anything. All I need to do is just check the calculations are correct at the end and then hit submit. My tax return took me 3.2 minutes this year. It was an absolute breeze. If you're a partnership, a company or a trust, you can bring the data down from the cloud in an Excel spreadsheet format, either lodge the tax return yourself or send it off to your tax professional. It is that easy. I encourage you to check it out. All right, so look, let's have a, a bit of a chat around depreciation. So depreciation is another type of tax deduction that you may be able to claim. There's two rules. It's the general depreciation rules and the simplified depreciation rules. So I'm going to talk around the simplified depreciation rules because that's what a majority of businesses use. Um, and as the name sort of really spells it out, it's simple, okay? And I really enjoy simple. So what the simplified depreciation rules allows you to do is instantly write off assets to claim a depreciation deduction. So this actually means that you can claim the full cost in the year that you buy the item. If it costs less than the threshold, obviously, and just a quick FYI, the instant asset write-off threshold has been um, raised to $150,000, okay? Um, so if you want to check more out on that, ato.gov.au. Now, look, other assets, look, they can be pulled in the small business asset pool. And then you can actually claim a deduction depreciation over several years. And I do know um, a lot of agricultural communities do do that um, because obviously, you know, you've got those seasonal components to deal with, with, you know, you probably have more bad years than good years, depending on, on what's falling out of the sky. So look, um, there are different percentages uh, that you can deduct each year. For example, 15% in the first year um, and 30% in subsequent years. So again, these rates are reviewed regularly. Um, make sure you're claiming for the right, the right rate for the right year. Now, um, the instant asset write-off thresholds, they are subject to change. Again, keep an eye on our website and just allow me to remind you that depreciation is a deduction off your assessable income. It's not a refund check, okay? All right, so as I've been saying all the way through the webinar, more information, head to ato.gov.au. Alternatively, don't hesitate to stop in at Narrabri Shire Council, ask them, can you point me in the right direction for a bit of low cost, no cost um, financial advice? Um, and they'd be more than happy to assist you. If it is a tax direct related question, you know what? My door is always open. You can take the girl off the dairy farm, but you can't take the body clock out of, out of the girl. So I'm awake at 3 a.m. in the morning um, and I don't mind putting, putting in the hard yards of my career because I'm incredibly passionate passionate about it. So don't be afraid to contact me if uh, you do have a tax or a superannuation question. Again, I can only give you the generals, um, but I'll certainly make sure I point you in the right direction. So don't hesitate to come knock on my door anytime. Um, look, the ATO, we're everywhere. We're, and I say that with smile. So we're across Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, if you want to stay at the forefront of your tax and superannuation obligations, follow us via our social media platforms. We've always got the latest, and, the, and I can always say the greatest, um, clearly shows how passionate I am about tax. I oh, know, I must be crazy, mustn't I? Um, but it has got the latest and the greatest um, on all the, the recently released tax and superannuation changes. Um, it'll also give you reminders of, of when lodgements are due. So it's a great little space to, to stay in contact. Um, also, we've got lots of how-tos on YouTube. 
okay? So if you wanna know how to depreciate something, how do I claim my, my motor vehicle um, business related kilometers? Um, how do I claim my running or my occupancy expenses? Head to YouTube, plenty of information on there. Or alternatively, you know what? If you're not into these social media platforms, good for you. Give us a call, 32866, um, and we'll be more than happy to take your call between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. Um, all right, so look, that's it from me. Don't forget, as Jilly says, cash flow is king. So we've got the cash flow um, small business webinar coming up in your space. Stay tuned, tell your family, tell your friends, spread the word. 22nd of October, next week, starting at 10 a.m. I guarantee it'll be a blast. I look forward to having you back. For the minute, I'll hand you back to Jilly and uh, a tremendous thanks to Narrabiah um, Shy Council. Can't wait for your summit. We're, gun we're gunning up uh, quite a bit of interest here in the old, in the, in the, in the big smoke. So you might have a few foreign email addresses uh, attending, but, uh, but we always get a bit excited about what's happening in Narrabiah because you're all so proactive. So back to you, Jilly. Thanks guys, appreciate that. Thank you so much, Lyndon, and we'd like to thank the Australian Tax Office and yourself for being a part of our New South Wales Small Business Month activities. Again, we have a lot happening this month, and by all means, get involved with our activities and events. It's really simple, just jump online and register. All of the online events this month, you will be able to watch back and replay if you register. And another great incentive is if you register for any of the events we have for New South Wales Small Business Month, you will have an opportunity to win a $100 Narrabri Shire Wiley Town gift card. Um, in addition to New South Wales Small Business Month in the Narrabri Shire, we do have a range of other uh, support available for small businesses, including the Wildleaf Town Gift Program, which is underwritten by the Narrabri Shire Council. We are also launching very shortly an online business directory for businesses within the Shire, which is very exciting. We are also currently conducting a visual merchandising program. So if you would like to hear any more information about the support services that we offer, by all means, feel free to contact me on the numbers on your screen or by email. Happy to chat either way. Um, I'd like to again thank Lyndon and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye for now.